Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And it is time for another oh so inspired collaboration hop. I hope you'll stick around, see who inspired us this month, see what I'm going to create, and find out how you can hop along to the other creators. Each month I host a hop here on YouTube called the Oh So Inspired Collaboration. And the team and I, we take the same inspiration piece and create something new based upon it. Since this is a hop, once you're done with my video, I would love for you to go check out everyone else's. You can try the hashtag in the title, but I also have a playlist in the description box below that will have them all in one place. I also have each of my team members individually linked down there as well. As you hop along today, you're going to see how the same card, which I'll tell you who it's by here in just a minute, can inspire such different creations. That's always one of my favorite parts of hopping along. Let me know your favorite part in that comment section below. This month, the team is being inspired by Kelly Fusco, who is at Kelly Fusco Designs on Instagram. Up on screen now is the card we chose, and as you hop along, everybody will tell you how they were inspired. For myself, I like the background is all that single image, but then there's that masked blended strip, and then one of the images is colored. As I get into the process, I will tell you about the products and tools that I'm using. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! To get started, I'll be using the Chasing Rainbows background stamp from Tailored Expressions. I do believe that Kelly used a single stamp and made her own background, but I thought this would be a great use for a background stamp that had lots of the same image. I'm going to be stamping and heat embossing on a piece of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by five and a half with VersaFine Claire ink and clear embossing powder. Now, because the background stamp does need to go around all of the edges, I couldn't put my cardstock down in the lower right hand corner like normal, so I added a little bit of adhesive to the back, took off some of the tack with my hand, and then I aligned it with a specific point on my misty grid. That way, if it does move, I know where it went. I inked up the stamp with VersaFine Claire Nocturne Black ink, and I used my pressure tool to get a nice crisp impression. There were a couple spots I had to add some more pressure to, but otherwise it's good to go. So now I'm going to pour my clear powder over the image. I did one half at a time, just to make sure all the excess goes in the tray and not all over my misty. And when that was covered, I brought in my heat tool and got that powder set. And you know I'm going to say it, as always, this is magical to me. Before I put this stamp away, I do need to stamp it one more time, and that is onto some masking paper. Because I need this to dry quickly, I'm using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink, which is a dye ink. I tore off a piece that I thought was about the same size as a card front, then I got the stamp set back up on this and got it inked up. Now for this you don't need a perfect impression, we're going to cut these to mask off the rainbows on the piece that we just stamped. Before I put my misty away, I want to stamp my sentiment, and for this I'm using Waffle Flower Crafts Oversized Rainbow Sentiment Set. I will be stamping onto a scrap of black cardstock and doing some heat embossing with sugar cube ink and white embossing powder. This piece it's going to be super important to use the anti-static powder tool because you don't want white spots all over your nice crisp black cardstock. I chose the sentiment that I wanted to stamp and it says sending you a and then I'll finish it off later with the die cut word rainbow. And you might be wondering why am I using white ink and white powder instead of maybe a Versa mark with a white powder and that's just because if the powder does not cover each and every part of that sentiment I still have that white ink below it so the sentiment stands out on the black cardstock. 
Once I had it stamped and heat set, I brought in just a soft towel to wipe off that excess powder. Once all of the stamping was done, I brought in my fine tip scissors and started cutting the rainbows out of the masked copy that I made with the background stamp. Now for this, this was a pretty easy shape to cut out, but I will tell you that after the first couple that I cut out and put onto the card, I off camera got my brother's scan and cut fired up and had it cut out the masks for me. Super quick and easy, but again, you don't have to have that to accomplish this look. Just like on Kelly's original card, I want to mask off just a strip to do some ink blending on. So for this, I brought in these sheets of Tailored Expressions masking paper and I cut two strips that were one and a half inches wide. My masked area is gonna be a little bit different than Kelly's. Hers was vertical, but I'm gonna make mine angled across the card. I chose a rainbow that I wanted to be fully in that area that later I would color in. And when I was doing my masking, I made sure none of that was cut off and that there was a nice border to either side of it. Now those are pieces are in place, so it's time to do the ink blending. For this, I'm using Cherry Pop, Lemon Meringue, and Snow Cone Ink from Tailored Expressions. By using just these three colors, where they meet in the middle, it will make the orange and the green. Now, because it's the lightest ink and I don't want to contaminate my brush, I did start with the yellow right there in the center of that masked area. Then I would go to my next colors and kind of come back in between to get a nice shade of orange and green included. Now, while I finished doing that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today, I would like to know, inspired by the theme of this video, what part or parts of Kelly's card inspired you? What would you take from it to make a new project? Let me know in that comment section below and make sure to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so I know that you have answered my question and would like me to see it. I can't wait to hear what inspired you. And now it's time for the big reveal. I loved seeing the background come together as I removed each piece of masking paper and those rainbow masks. I love those bright black and white rainbows against that ink blended rainbow stripe. To color my chosen rainbow in, I got out my Olo markers, a red, yellow, and blue, just like those original inks that I used. And I'm not gonna do any shading on this rainbow today. One of the things I love about the Olo markers is you don't have to keep blending and blending to get a nice color. These go on nice and smoothly from the beginning. So using a single color works with these. I want to have a little bit of a white border on my card front, so I took this off screen along with my favorite things, Stitched Rectangle Stacks 2, the very largest die, and I have this nice stitched edge for my final card. I have shared this crafty hack before, but I love when I ink blend to clean off my brushes on the inside of the card base. This again helps me get them clean, but it adds a little bit more color to the inside. So using just the ink that was left over from blending the rainbow strip, I used the brushes on the inside and now I have a little rainbow in there too. Once the rainbow was on the inside of the card, I added adhesive to the back of my ink blended and stamped piece and got that centered onto the card front. I like how those corners of color bleed off and have that nice white frame. Now it's time to get this sentiment added. Off camera, I used the coordinating oversized rainbow word dies to die cut the word rainbow out of black cardstock and the shadow out of vellum. Then I just used some liquid glue to adhere those pieces together and I put a little strip of foam tape on the back of my stamped sending you a just for a little dimension on the front. Once that was in place, I brought in my Barely Art liquid glue and added adhesive to the back of the rainbow die cut word. I did try to keep the glue right behind where the black cardstock was on the front so it wouldn't show through the vellum. Once I got that in place, I pushed it down with a couple clear stamp blocks and then I let that dry for about five minutes. 
To finish the card off, I wanted to add a little sparkle and some details to my colored rainbow. So I brought in some bits and pieces drip drops from Tailored Expressions, placed five on my card front where I thought they looked nice, and got those adhered down with the Barely Art liquid glue. I will be using a fine tip white Posca pen to add some highlight lines in the upper right of the rainbow. I put a dot, a line, and a dot on each of the colored arcs. And here are some close up looks at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I was inspired to create today's card. Don't forget to check out Kelly's original inspiration piece by clicking on the links in the description box. And now I hope you'll hop along to all of the other creators by using either the hashtag in the title or the playlist link down in the description box. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.